first off, let me reemphasize the fact that I, I am a complete novice with this instrument. If you look at this turn, you look at all the strings and think it's very overwhelming because there's so many strings. You don't play all the strings. Well, you can, you can play all the strings. Uh, the sympathetic strings underneath, which are out of tune a little bit there. Um, you tune to the scale that you're playing. Um, because as you hit a note that is the same note as one of the sympathetic strings, there you hear them ring. So that's the top note resonating through the strings that are tuned the same note underneath. So that's what gives it the, that cool. Um, you're supposed to only play with these two fingers. You've got your plectrum here, your little pick that you can, plick, you can pick up or down with. Um, this spot right here is the spot to rest your thumb. Uh, the way you hold the instrument uh, is with this arm and traditionally, oh, I'm doing many blasphemous things, I'm sure. You want to rest it on your foot and your hand, like that, right? Your foot and your forearm hold up the instrument. I have an injury at this point, I can't sit that way, so I'm putting it on a pillow here, holding it between my leg and my forearm. You only play these two strings for the most part. You can play, I mean, you're strumming all of them, they're tuned to a chord, uh, which gives you the nice droning uh, aspect of the music. Um, the other difference between a guitar is you don't touch the fretboard. Uh, you don't touch the frets. You play near the fret, right? Uh, but you don't touch anything underneath. This, the strings are located in the, the center part of the instrument so that when you, you have all this area here to bend them. You have to keep the frets very clean with steel wool, otherwise uh, you can break your strings very easily. This here, uh, a guitar has uh, the body, right? The, an acoustic guitar has a body that gives you the, the sound, helps project the sound. This, you have one gourd here and one gourd up here. It makes it louder for everyone, but it's it's... I have this on my right side and this on my left side, right? So it gives me a more of a stereo full sound when I play it sitting here. Makes probably more difference for me in this position than you over there anyway. Stringing it takes a long time. Tuning it is very important. It has to be in perfect tune for it to sound right. It's a very delicate, wonderful instrument. <laughs> I have it fitted with a violin microphone and a quarter inch jack down here so that you can play it through a, a system. I bought this one in India for a hundred dollars. The cool thing about a sitar is as you can move these frets to change the scale, you know, to flats and sharps, you'll see there's some spaces in here where on a guitar there would be a fret there, but on the sitar there isn't a fret there. Um, so there are a lot of things to get used to. Um, uh, uh, once again, playing it as a Western rock and roll musician uh, is a lot different than uh, learning the, the specific ragas and all the things uh, that you would if you were being a classically trained Indian musician. Um, but you can, you can. You can pick out your favorite 
pop song and you know simply play that no problem it's it's uh, in the luck of Eden Hall on uh, the new record um, there's a track called she's using all the colors it's bass drums and sitar and uh, I use the sitar as a as a to set a mood It's not like it's a lead instrument or anything in the song, but it is the main, it is one of the main instruments. It's just, um, you know, it's rock and roll, isn't it?